Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Work at It Ministries. And what we do here is have Bible talk. We just have basic discussions about everyday life. And matter of fact, that's what the series is called. It's called Life. This is the fourth part of the Life series. And I want you to go back and watch parts one, two, and three. It is so important that we understand how to deal with life, how we understand to take the appropriate steps in life. And, and how we do that is by making the right decisions. And it's a way that we can make decisions. Yeah, it, it's a way that we can do that. And so uh, my inspiration for, for this series was the Life Board Game. It was a life board game. And I, I was watching TV one day and God said, yeah, that's that's what I want you to talk about. I want you to talk about life. And so since the life board game was my inspiration, you, you know what happened in the life board game. You had a wheel, you spun the wheel, and then sometimes you had to pick up a card. I think each time you had to pick up a card. And so that life card, when you pulled it, it told you where you had to go. It made a decision for you. And so the life card of today is your eyes. That That's, that's the life card of today is using your eyes. How you're going to make your decisions today is strictly using your sight. Nothing else. God, sometimes that's what God wants us to just use, the things that he has already given us. And he said, I want you to use your eyes today. This is the seer's decision. And, and we're going to see how Daniel, it's a guy named Daniel in the Bible, how he used his eyes to decide. How he used his eyes to decide. And, and you know who, who Daniel was. You know who he was. Daniel was a man of God and a man of integrity. He was a man of prayer. And when we first see Daniel step on the scene, all he did was use his eyes to make a decision. He provoked somebody to use their eyes to make a decision. And we're going to start off with Daniel chapter 1, starting in verse 8. I'm coming out the New Living Translation. And let me take this, um, let me take this, take that flash off, it's bothering my eyes. And so, let's start at verse 8. It says, but Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them. Them is him and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel was determined that he was going, you know what? Let me secure everybody. We're not going to eat the food that's given to us by the king. So he didn't just make that decision and, and just went on ahead and not did what the king asked him to do. But, but guess what he did? He asked for that to not happen. Sometimes all we have to do is just open up our mouth and he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. He just didn't do it, but he asked first. Now God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. So God gave Daniel and his, or just Daniel, God gave Daniel favor. So because Daniel had favor, that favor, it fell upon all his other friends. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got that same favor. So he asked the chief of staff, can we not eat these unacceptable foods? But the chief of staff said, he responded. And he said, I'm afraid of my Lord, the king, who has ordered that you eat this food and wine. I'm afraid that if you become pale and thin compared to the other use of your age, I am afraid the king will have me beheaded. So he's saying like, Dad, I really want to do that for you because I like you, Daniel. I like you and your little buddies. But guess what? The king will have my head if he sees something out of order. If he sees something is not right, he's going to kill me. I don't know if I like you that much, Daniel, to get beheaded. <laughs> but Daniel said this. Come on. Come on. Daniel is about to ask him to use his eyes. 
He said, okay, chief, I tell you what, please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water. He said, now just give us 10 days. And at the end of these 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. He said, then make your decision in light of what you see. In light, he said, make your decision based just off of what you see. And the attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. Come on. Point number one of tonight is agreement is found in conversation. Agreement is found in conversation. So I, I don't know who this is for, but sometimes all you have to do is just open up your mouth. Sometimes all you got to do is just have a conversation. This actually happened to me yesterday. I just started opening up, having conversation, and that landed into an agreement. I didn't even expect, I'm telling you, it landed into an agreement unexpectedly. I wasn't expecting the, I wasn't expecting the response that I got, that I got. But all Daniel did was say, hey, I, he had a, a good plan, and that was found in conversation. Agreement was found there. So I, I don't know who this is for, but sometimes you just have to open up to your husband. Sometimes you just have to open up to your wife. Have a conversation. Don't just don't just throw it up underneath the rug. Don't just try to act like it's not happening. No, open up your mouth and let's talk it out. We're talking about the seer's decision tonight. Come on, everybody say the seer's decision. What do you see? Oh, I feel like I'm talking to myself tonight. Because I, I something just happened to me yesterday that came by just using the eyes. All we talked about was sight. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Jesus. All you got to do is just have a conversation. So all, sometimes all you got to do is just talk to your boss. Maybe he might. He just might make that accommodation for you. You don't have to go through the back end. You don't have to try to make loops and hoops. Trying to do it sneaky. Trying to go about it the, the unlawful way. No, God just said all you got to do is open up your mouth and have a conversation. Because agreement is found in conversation. That's point number one for somebody. So, so let me show you what happened. Because see, Daniel came up with a plan that was so convincing that the chief of staff had to taste and see. Oh my goodness. He had to taste and see what Daniel was talking about. And this is a note to somebody. Come up with a plan that is so good that somebody will have to fall for it. Oh my. Somebody will have to fall for the plan. So what this means is, is sometimes you have to bet a plan. In order for it to be executed. So practice on that thing. What do you have planned that you need to continue to practice on? So when it's time for you to present it, somebody will have to fall for it. Come on. Based just off of vision. Come on. Who? Somebody is getting ready to fall into a plan because you have vision. We're talking about the seer's decision tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said it's vision. We need to have vision today. Point number two is demonstrate what you want to see. Yeah, that, that's that bet and that plan. Come on, practice it in the mirror. Write it down. Continue to go over it with friends and family so they can help you process it. Come on, we're talking about a demo tonight based upon what you want to see. Demonstrate what you want to see. Practice it. Don't don't bring people a, a bunch of scattered ideas. No, have it ready, have it written down. Come on, that's for somebody. Because see, a good plan is getting ready to get you this R word. Results. I mean, I'm talking about results with a bunch of S's at the end. Come on, that's come on. That's for somebody. So we're getting ready to go to chapter one, verses 15 and 16, because I want you to see what a good plan gets you. Come on. Oh, my goodness. This word is blessing me today. At the end of the 10 days. Now, remember, Daniel asked the guy, the chief of staff, he said, just give me 10 days. That I don't know who that is for. Maybe you need to go on the 10 day 
a, not a diet, a 10 day fast. Because what Daniel asked him for was to not eat the meat, but to eat vegetables and water. Somebody needs to go on a vegetable and water. Not a diet, but a fast. Come on. A fast. Meditating, focusing with God. And at the end of these 10 days, Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as we know them, looked healthier and better nourished than the young man who had been eating the food assigned by the king. That's a no for somebody. Don't You don't have to digest and eat what somebody is trying to give you. No, no, stick with the plan. Don't, don't take on that unhealthy food. And so after that, the attendant fed them only after that. The attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided for the others. See, you about to get something that somebody else cannot get. You're about to get favor that somebody else could not get. Who is ready to exchange the meat for the vegetables? Come on. That's what we're talking about tonight. This attendant made a decision based off of what he saw. Oh my goodness. Based off of what he saw. So I got a question for somebody tonight. Who wants the vegetables instead of the meat? Who's about to make an exchange? Who's about to substitute something for something? See, you might have to let something go that you used to like or that you used to desire to get the bigger plant. Come on, I'm telling you, all that what you're doing right now I'm is so minute compared to what God is finna give you. If somebody believes that right now, you finna be blessed. I don't know who that is for, but God said the thing that you're doing right now is so minute Compared to what I have planned for you. Part, point number three is a healthy plan gets you visible results. A healthy plan gets you visible results. I, this, come on. This is for somebody. What is it that you see? That you need to decide to take on or to get rid of. So, so let me show you what Daniel did. He's saying what he said to the chief of staff was, let's trade in lack for longevity. Oh, my. God. Who wants to trade in lack for longevity? I believe it's somebody. I, somebody is receiving this word right now. I don't know who this is for, but I'm scared up. Now. What this means though, because we're talking about using the eyes. Your C, your eyes have to be rightly divided though. Because see, we can see stuff and want it, but it's not for us. We can see and, and want it, but it ain't right for us to even take on. Because see, somebody, somebody is watching somebody else's husband right now. You see that. You want that, but it ain't yours. Hold up. Back up. You can't take that on. It ain't even right. So your seat has to be right from the get-go. Somebody said get-go. Come on now. So you can only see right initially if the plan was right from the beginning. So so don't, don't be trying to make your seat right. When it's wrong. You you know what's right from wrong. Your, your mama taught you. I, I, don't, I don't have to tell you what's right from wrong. Your, your, you were raised. You have a conscience. You know what's right from wrong. So check your seat. Somebody check your eyes. Somebody needs some corrective vision right now. So what you don't want to do is replace your heart for the seat. You don't want to do. Th th this is a, a, a thing that we do. We take on our hearts, desires, and think there, there are plans, like they're good plans. Because it's what our heart desires. But, but the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Oh my, your heart is sick. You can't trust your heart. God said trust your vision today. 
What are your eyes showing you that you are dismissing? I'm telling you it's something. It's something. Your eyes are showing you something and then it's fooling you. Come on. God said trade in the meat for the vegetables and water today. That's for the good and the bad. God wants us to have right eyes today. Just, right, just eyes. And I'm not talking about sometimes you, you're, you, you can use your faith sometimes to replace what you see. Because sometimes you have to use faith to, to overcome the sight. Because sometimes we are in predicaments that are so bad that the sight of it can fool you. So sometimes you have to take faith and replace it with what you see. But that ain't my message tonight. <laughs> that, 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 we ain't talking about faith tonight. We talking about making a decision based off of what you see. Come on. I, I don't know who this is for. But somebody is getting this message today. So Somebody sees that their boyfriend and girlfriend ain't no good, but we still sticking by Somebody knows that they're supposed to teach and reach somebody, but, but we're so stuck on what we want, the power within us that we won't go to reach them. Who sees something that they're supposed to do, but you ain't doing it? You ain't even made a decision. Life is about making decisions. And tonight, God said, make a decision based off of what you see. Not what you want. He just said what you see. I'm going to keep saying it tonight, and I don't care who tired of me saying it. I don't care. I'm up here. I'm a messenger of God. I'm just an informer. But he wants you to get it right. And no excuses is the thing for work at its uh, 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 thing this year for 2021. That's our thing. No excuses. God said you will be equipped by the end of this year. You will be equipped for 2022. No excuses this year. Like, like you see that relationship ain't going no further than the bed. You see that. But you still keep doing it. He's, a, he's not a committer. She's not a committer. Fellas, you know she is sleaze, but you continue to want to sleep with her. Because see, the thing is that you keep on sleeping around because you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are, so you go from this way to this way to this way to try to appease yourself, to get fulfilled with the meat instead of the vegetables. Somebody better get that tonight. Come on, we talking about your life here. It's TikTok. TikTok is getting ready to expire. Come on. Get strong and solid. Get strong and solid. Don't replace your heart for the sea tonight. God, God is challenging us in this life series to see what's up. Not know what's up. No, not what you know, it's what you see. Come on, who is ready to trade in the meat for the vegetables and water tonight? I believe it's somebody on this line. I could go on and on and on about the seer. <laughs> God wants us to make a seer's decision tonight. I believe somebody's going to step up to the plate tonight. I believe God has something for you tonight. I believe, hallelujah, that if you just make a decision to, uh, to, to base something off of what you see, God is getting ready to do something. That don't mean you got to execute it tonight. But he said, just make a decision. What's up? Come on. God got something for you. Come on. He wants to will you in. He wants to do it for you. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's, let's just, let's just will this in tonight. God said that you can make the first decision tonight by receiving salvation. See, see, the easiest way to see is to allow him to help you. And God says you can do that here tonight. He says you can receive salvation tonight. And it's so simple. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and was raised up from the grave in three days, then you're saved. That's the word. He said, that's all you got to do is have a confession and believe. It's a two-part thing. You going to church does not make you saved. You used to be in church. That don't make you saved. God said, you can come back home today. 
if you stop going to church, if you don't pray, if you don't read your word, all of these things, that means you have fell off. That means you fell back. But God said, you can come back home. It doesn't count for what you used to do. God says, no, what are you doing today? And he wants you to see that you need to receive salvation today. And you can do it. We're going to both do it together. So if you want to receive Christ for the first time, or if you want to come back home, you can do it today. So it's real simple. We'll do it all together. Just raise your hands with me. So if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and was raised from the grave in three days, then you're saved. So if you believe that today, just say, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, I believe. Yes. That means that you're saved. That means that now you can come back home. Come on. I believe it's a thousand people that said, I believe. If, if you believe that today, I want you to type at the bottom here, I believe. Make a confession. Make a declaration. It's about showing up. Raising your hand and confessing who you are in front of a, a lot of people. God says, so what? You see something today that they didn't. Trust the sea. We're going to close out in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, man. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for giving us correct a vision today. Oh, somebody just made a decision to come back home. Somebody just made a decision to be saved, oh God. Hallelujah. We want to use the things that you have naturally given us. You said it ain't that deep. All we have to do is just use our eyes tonight. Tonight, just use your eyes. And God is just so pleased with you. So Father God, help us with our, uh, with our eyes, with our vision today. Little by little, we're going to try to make it not to just 2020 vision, but I believe the perfect vision is 2021. <laughs> and we're in the year of 2021. So we want to walk in perfect vision. We want to walk in perfect power. We want to walk in virtuous power, oh God. Hallelujah. And you're going to help us with that. Oh, allow us to be perfect because we have other people that we need to help. Oh God, hallelujah. It's not about us. It's just about our future, what you have for us and what you're going to do through us. So we thank you for both things. And we call it all done in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Hey, y'all. This is, this is Work at It Ministries and we do Bible talk. I want y'all to stick with me. We're going somewhere. Peace.